بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العلم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم إننا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع من قلب لا يخشع من نفس لا تشبع من دعوة لا يستجاب لها أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome everyone to another class of our tafsir of Surah Maryam And today we're moving on to verse number 72 And inshallah ta'ala by the end of the class We should have completed this page from this wonderful chapter of the Quran. If you recall, we left off last class speaking about As-Sirat, the bridge that will be over the hellfire on the Day of Judgment. Allahumma sallam sallam. O oh Allah, protect us all against that torment. And Allah Azza wa Jalla, He mentioned in the last verse, وَإِن مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقْضِيًّا And there is none of you who will pass over it. Yani, every single person will pass over it, be it a mu'min or kuffar. Everyone, a kafir, yani, everyone will pass over it. This is a decree your Lord must fulfill. And we said that the word warid had two interpretations by the mufassirun. Some say it refers to everyone will pass by it. While Others among the Mufassirun, they say that it refers to ad-dukhul. Yani people will, everyone will enter it. In the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ وَنَذَرُوا الظَّالِمِينَ فِيهَا جِثِيَّةً Then we will deliver those who were devout, leaving the wrongdoers there on their knees. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we see he combines between his promise and his threat, his wa'ad and the wa'id. Uh, this is also referred to in al balagha as al iftinan. As for the meaning, Ibn Jarir al Tabari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned in his tafsir, Yaqulu ta'ala dhikruhu, Thumma nunajji min al nari ba'da wurudi jami'ihim iyaha. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, We will deliver them, we will save them min al nari. From the fire, after they pass by it, all of them, yani pass by the fire. Who will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save on that day? Alladhina taqaw, those who possess a taqwa, fakhafuhu bi adai faraidihi wa sinabi ma'asi. Who are those who possess taqwa? They are those who feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, had that fear by performing the obligations of Islam, and avoiding and staying away from acts of disobedience, things that are not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the ones who have a taqwa Naam. وَنَذْرُ الظَّالِمِينَ فِيهَا جِثِيَّةِ Ibn Jarir, he says, وَنَدَعُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ فَعَبَدُوا غَيْرَ اللَّهِ That we will leave those who wrong themselves. They were oppressors. And what is meant by oppression here in the shirka? La dhulmun azim. Here, dhulm, of course, dhulm, oppression, is of different types. But the greatest type and the worst type of them all is a shirk. Associating a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about. Those who oppress themselves. By worshipping other than Allah. فَعَبَدُوا غَيْرَ Allah, They worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَصَوْ رَبَّهُمْ And they disobeyed him. وَخَالَفُوا أَمْرَهُ وَنَهْيَهُ فِي النَّارِ جِثِيَّةِ And they oppose his commandments as well as his prohibitions. So as a result, they will be in the fire. جِثِيَّةِ يعني On their knees. نعم. Ibn Jarir, he goes on to explain what is the meaning of jithiyya. He says, Burukan ala rakabihim, that they are those who are on their knees, yani who are on their knees. We're going to expound on that word later on. So this is the tafsir of the ayah. 
This is the meaning of the ayah. طيب. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will save those who have a taqwa. Sah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ This wording right here, we will deliver those. This wording, this part of the verse, you find that Mufassirun, they go on to explain the intended meaning here. Um, because this is considered to be among the verses in the Quran where its outer meaning seems to be difficult to understand to some. But of course, among Ahlul Ain, the people of knowledge, those with insight, its meaning is clear. But among the Awam, the general folk, people who are not well versed in the Quran, in Islamic knowledge, they may look at this verse and find some find it to be problematic. Find it to be problematic. طيب? So you find that Mufassirun, they take their time to explain this verse and its intended meaning. So we will deliver. Does that mean that the Muttaqun were actually in the fire? The issue is, if they were in the fire, then that means that they were punished. Is it not the case? And this is why this verse seems to be problematic among the awam, the general folk. So what does this verse mean? What is the intended meaning of them being delivered from the fire? Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he explains it in detail in his famous book, Dar'u Ta'arud al-Aqli wa Naqli. Uh, one of his more advanced books in which he addresses topics similar to this. Uh, he says that لَفْضُ النَّجَاتِ مِنَ الشَّرِّ يَقْتَضِي إِنْ عِقَادَ سَبَبِ الشَّرِّ لَا نَفْسَ حُصُولِهِ فِي الْمُنَجَّةِ فَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا In Surah Al-Maryam لَا يَقْتَضِي أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا مُعَذَّبِينَ ثُمَّ نَجَوْا لَكِنْ يَقْتَضِي أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا مُعَرَّضِينَ لِلْعَذَابِ الَّذِي إِنْ عَقَدَ سَبَبُهُ وَهَذَا هُوَ الْوُرُودِ It means that they'll be saved from the causes of evil, okay? It does not mean that they were actually in the fire, that they were in the fire being punished, okay? Rather, what is intended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse is that they were saved from the fire. Khairan. Um, they were shown the punishment, but they were not punished themselves, understand? So this is the meaning of Allah Azza wa saying, not that they were in the fire being punished and they were experiencing that punishment, but rather they were shown the fire. They were shown the punishment. Okay? They were shown that punishment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered them from being punished. You all understand the difference? Ibn Jirir al-Tabri, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned in his tafsir, he goes on to say that Qatada, he said, Inna nasa waradu jahannama wa hiya sawda mudlima. That mankind will come to Jahannam while it is pitch dark, pitch black. Allah Akbar. As for the believers, those who have iman, then their good deeds will be illuminated for them. So when you go to the Jahannam, it will be pitch black. But the believers, their good deeds will be illuminated for them. And they will be able to see their path. And they will be saved from the Fire from the Jahannam. وَأَمَّا الْكُفَّارِ Subhanallah. As for the disbelievers, فَأَوْبَقَتْهُمْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ As for the disbelievers, then their deeds destroyed them. Their deeds destroyed them. وَحْتُبِسُوا بِذُنُوبِهِمْ And as a result, they are considered, the, the, their sins have imprisoned them. They'll be detained in that Jahannam in that sajjeen, okay, in that prison, internal prison, forever as a result of their sins. Riyadhu Billah. A person may ask, what are some of the benefits derived from passing over a sirat, that bridge? What do you guys think, Yani? We read about the sirat, we learn about the sirat, we know that day, that day is coming. Right? Something which we all need to prepare for. And something that we should think about on a daily basis. In fact, among the tafasir of the verse, Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqim, 
O Allah, guide us to the straight path. What's included in that part of the verse is not only the straight path in this dunya, but also the straight, the path, lead us aright on the sirat, sirat al-mustaqim on that day, yawm al So because this is part of Fatiha, then it's something we should think about on a daily basis, multiple times throughout our day. So what are some of the benefits when you think about the sirat? What are some things you derive from that mawqif, yani that, that event? What are some things that come to mind when you think about the sirat? For those who are present. Of course, if you see the fire and you're a believer, may Allah make us among the believer, muttaqeen, they'll be saved. صح? So what do you benefit from that? You benefit the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You recognize the mercy of Allah and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save you from that punishment. And this allows you to recognize the favor and blessings of Allah azza wa jalla. Thus increase, you increase in your gratitude. You increase in your acts of worship. You increase in your desire to race forth in performing good deeds and staying away from things that would lead to your destruction and falling into that hellfire. We have the Now, also among the benefits that are derived from the passing of the Sirat is that when the believers see this event, they will naturally increase in their happiness and joy. Sah? And when they do finally enter paradise, they will truly, truly be grateful for it. Okay? Because they've experienced the, the reality of the fire. They saw what it did to people before they entered the paradise. Now, they saw the terrors and the, and the horrors that, that's within the fire and the destruction of the fire. So now that they saw it with their own eyes, they experienced it. They're able to enjoy paradise even more because they recognize, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved us from that. Now, also from the benefits of um, the sirat, passing over the sirat, is that it increases the sorrow and grief of those who enter the fire. Because they were warned throughout the dunya, throughout their lives, multiple times they were sent ayat after ayat after ayat, and to worship Allah and to prepare for this day. So that when they see that the promise has come true, it will increase them in their sorrow and grief and their regrets and in their regrets. And that increases their punishment as a result, right? Because when a person sees like, subhanAllah, I should have listened. I should, why did I not listen, right? And they begin to, yani, it increases them in their sorrow and grief. Now, so these are just some of the benefits derived from the passing of the sirat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that punishment and allow us to pass as quickly as possible. I mean, um, at the end of the verse, Allah says that he will leave them. That we will leave the wrongdoers. Meaning in the fire. Okay. Jifiya on their knees. On their knees. Subhanallah bihamdi. And just the way Allah Azza wa Jalla words this part of the verse, it shows us that Allah will leave them without giving them any attention, nor concern. And that, that, subhanAllah, increases a person's punishment as well. Because there's no hope. If Allah leaves you in a punishment, in the fire, and He just doesn't give you any attention nor concern, then there's no hope whatsoever for, be, for being delivered against the fire, against the punishment. Now, subhanAllah bihamdi. And it increases them in their pain and suffering. May Allah protect us all. Uh, Allah ends the verse by saying jifiyya, and this is the, one of the words that are considered to be gharib al-Qur'an. Uh, those words that the, per, the common person may not understand. Um, Qatada Rahim Allah Ta'ala he mentioned that Jifiyan ala rukabihim is that they will be on their knees, that they will be on their knees. And Ibn Zayd he said, Al Jafi Sharul Julus, that it's the worst type of sitting when a person is on their knees, Jafiyan. And this type of sitting is not done 
لا يجلس الرجل جافيا الا عند كرب ينزل به a person does not sit in this manner unless he is afflicted unless an affliction or a disaster descends upon them this is when you say someone is jafiyan khayran so allah is describing their state and that they are afflicted with this evil of the hellfire really bila naam then allah in the next verse he mentions wa idha tutla alayhim ayatuna bayyinatin قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أي الفريقين خير مقاما وأحسن نديا. That when our clear revelations are recited to them, the disbelievers ask the believers mockingly, which of the two of us is better in status and superior in assembly? المقام خير مقاما. Uh, here, يعني موضع إقامتهم. In reference to their homes. Maqam here is a reference to their homes. In the translation, it says status. But among Mufassirun, they say it refers to their homes. Nadiyan wa ahsanu nadiyan. It refers to al majlis. Wahu al majlis. Okay. Uh, as the Arabs they say, wal Arab to some al majlis and nadi. They call a majlis, a gathering, a place of sitting and gathering, they refer to it as being a nadi. Khairan. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, he interpret this word nadiyan to refer to mean majlisan. Tayyib. Ibn Jarir al-Tabri, rahimahullah he mentioned in his tafsir of this verse, وَإِذَا تُطْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا بَيِّنَاتٍ قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَيُّ الْفَرِيقَيْنِ مِنَّا وَمِنْكُمْ أَوْسَعُ عَيْشًا وَأَنْعَمُ بَالًا وَأَفْضَلُ مَسْكَنًا وَأَحْسَنُ مَجْلِسًا وَأَجْمَعُ عَدَدًا وَغَاشِيَةً فِي الْمَجْلِسِ نَحْنُ أَمْ أَنْتُمْ He said that the interpretation of this verse is that the, muf- the, the kuffar, they said which of the two parties between us have a more wealthy life and a blessed situation and better homes and superior assemblies or gatherings and are more in number and servants in in the gathering and have more servants, yani us or you. So the kuffar, they were using the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon them in the dunya as evidence to show that their way was the correct way. And because the Muslims at that time were, were considered to be weak in number, weak in their status, weak in their wealth, right? They didn't have much wealth compared to the kuffar, the wealthy kuffar at that time. They deemed them as being upon falsehood, subhanAllah. So, ajib, ajib. I mean, we think about how shaitan really deceives these people. They use the blessings that Allah has given them in the dunya as evidence to show that they are upon the truth. And the status or lack thereof among the Muslims at that time as evidence to show that they are upon falsehood. SubhanAllah. Then Allah says, Allah responds to this doubt. Okay, is it true? He says, imagine, O Prophet, وسلم, how many people have we destroyed before them who were far better in luxury and splendor? Showing that what? Just because you are blessed with material things in the dunya, that does not mean that you're upon the truth. It's not evidence to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors you. Naam, and this is a, a refutation against a thought that some Muslims may have when they're Tested in their lives, in their daily lives, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests them in their iman, okay, with an affliction or a calamity. They think, oh, this means that Allah is displeased with me because He is testing me, because I'm being afflicted with such and such fitna, trial, and tribulation. La, that's not the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us in the dunya. Because the life, the hayat of dunya was made for tests. Every single person will experience tests. And the people who experience the most and the most severe tests 
or who ikhwan wa akhwat who those with the highest level of iman those with the highest level of iman and they are the anbiya wa rusul okay fal amthal wal amthal then those who are closest to them طيب. so subhanallah we have to understand that if we don't have or experience the luxuries of the dunya that's not evidence to show that we're not favored by Allah okay if we're being tested in the dunya it's not evidence to show that that we do not have status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact it's a test from Allah azza wa jalla to show us how we will respond if we draw closer to Allah azza wa jalla then that leads to a higher status with him khairan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says here that he destroyed people who had higher status and had more of the dunya before the kuffar of Quraysh. Allah Akbar. They had more of the dunya and they were far more wealthier than them. Yet Allah destroyed them. Subhanallah. He says here, Athafan wa ri'ya. The word ri'ya is another word that's considered to be a gharib al-Quran. And in the Qira'at, there are two ways to pronounce it, either with the Hamza or with a Ya. So, Wariya or Wariya, Wariya, who are far better in the way they look, the way they seem, and the way, yani in the bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted them, is the tafsir of Ibn Abbas, is the manzar, how they look, how they, yani they look to others. While athaf refers to luxury, al mataa those possessions that they possess. طيب. Then Allah says, Subhanahu wa Taala, قل من كان في الضلالة فليمدد له الرحمن مدا حتى إذا رأوا ما يعادون إما العذاب وإما الساعة فسيعلمون من هو شر مكان وأضعف جندا. Say, O Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, whoever is Entrenched in misguidance. Man kana fil dalalati. Yani is in the middle, is engulfed with misguidance from all over. This is why Allah used the word fi. Is as if, for example, when you put something in a box, you put something in the box and it's, you close the box, it's, in, it's covered in darkness from all sides. Right? This, the fi, gives you that meaning as well. Yani that they are in misguidance from all sides. Without any light, without any pathway of being guided. Subhanallah bihamdi. Qul man kana fi dalalati fal yamdud lahu rahmanu madda. Whoever is entrenched in misguidance, the most compassionate, Ar Rahman, will allow them plenty of time. Allah Akbar. Until behold, hatta ida ra'au ma yu'aduna. Until behold, they face what they are threatened with. Either with the torment or the hour. Only then, Only then will they realize who is in worse position. And inferior in manpower. SubhanAllah. When the reality strikes, that's when they come to the realization of who is worse in position and weaker in manpower. Now, uh, Ibn Jarir al-Tabri, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned, مَنْ كَانَ مِنَّا وَمِنْكُمْ فِي الضَّلَالَةِ جَائِرًا عَنْ طَرِيقِ الْحَقِّ سَالِكًا غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْهُدَى فَلْيَمْدُدْ لَهُ الرَّحْمَنُ مَدَّى يَقُولْ فَلْيُطَوِّلْ لَهُ اللَّهُ فِي ضَلَالَتِهِ Whoever among us or you are in misguidance, exceeding, deviating from the right path, right? وَمِنْهَا جَائِر Traveling other than the path of guidance, Right, this is the intended meaning. Then our Rahman will allow them plenty of time. Allah will allow them plenty of time by extending their time in their misguidance. Subhanallah. Mujahid said about this part of the verse, that Allah will leave him in his transgression. Allah will leave him in his transgression. Subhanallah. And this shows one of the reasons, or one of the reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not immediately destroy 
a transgressing people, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, we know that he's not ghafil of what the zalimun perform, or what the transgressors and the oppressors, what they do on earth. Allah is not ghafil. Allah is not heedless of their actions. But why doesn't Allah immediately punish them? There are many reasons mentioned in the Quran. Among them is what's mentioned here by Mujahid. Allah will leave him in his transgression. For what purpose? So that they can increase in their transgression and thus obtain more misdeeds, more sins. And when an individual obtains more, more misdeeds and more sins, they will receive a worse punishment. Allah Azza Jalla tells us in Surah Ali Imran, "ولا يحسبن الذين كفروا أنما نملي لهم خير لأنفسهم إنما نملي لهم ليزدادوا إثما ولهم عذاب مهين." <clears throat> Allah tells us that those who disbelieve should not think that our postponing of their punishment is a good for them. خير لأنفسهم that is something good for them. Rather, we only postpone their punishment so that they may increase in sinfulness. Subhanallah. Then Allah says, وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ muhin," And for them is a disgracing torment. They will have a disgrace, يعني, a torment that is disgracing. Subhanallah bihamdi. Now, if a person re reflects over this, this ayah in Surah Ali Imran, Yani, it should immediately encourage them to repent to Allah. If you see that you're continuously falling into sin, you live a life of sin, and you're not getting any better, reading this verse, hearing this verse, should encourage us to return back to him and leave off those sins. Because those sins are going to, going to lead to more punishment in the hereafter. So this is one of the reasons as to why Allah does not immediately punish those who disobey him another reason you find is Allah Azza wa Jalla is Al-Halim he's the most forbearing he's the most patient صح? يعني, and Allah gives people time to stop their transgression to change their life and become better to become a Muslim subhanAllah bihamdi Allah wants us to worship him Allah wants us to be among the people of paradise. So he gives us opportunity after opportunity to return back to him and worship him in a way that's pleasing to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that reason, we find that Allah Azza he mentions, وَرَبُّكَ الْغَفُورُ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ He tells us that your Lord is al-ghafur, the most forgiving, ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ Owner of mercy. لَوْ يُؤَاخِذُهُمْ بِمَا كَسَبُوا that if he were to call all of us into account for what we've done, then surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have hastened their punishment because they're deserve we're deserving of it, right? If we were to be held accountable for what we did, truly held accountable, then Allah would have certainly destroyed us already. But what does Allah do? He gives us, yani, there's an appointed time, okay? Uh, beyond which they will find, we will find no escape. And once it comes, that's it. There's no other opportunity. But Allah says before mentioning all this, وَرَبُّكَ وَرَبُّكَ الْغَفُورُ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ SubhanAllah. He says that he is al-ghafur ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ Indicating, and he mentioned this first, before mentioning hastening their punishment, to show us that he wants us to repent. He wants us to repent and change our lives and draw closer to him. And we see this throughout the Quran, even with the worst of creation. Now, throughout the Quran, we find that Allah sent signs after signs to the worst of creation. Like Fir'aun. Fir'aun, subhanAllah bihamdi. Despite being among the heads of Tawagheet, Allah Azza wa Jalla sent him numerous signs and even sent him two prophets, Musa and Harun, alayhim as-salam. He said, إِذْ هَبَا إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنَ 
innahu tagha both of you go to fir'aun for certainly he has transgressed all bounds he's reached a point where he says wa ana rabbukum al-a'la he even claims that he is the lord subhanallah faqula lahu qawlan layyana despite that allah gave him a chance he said when you go to fir'aun say to him speak to him in a mild manner for what purpose la'allahu yatadhakkaru aw yakhsha so that perhaps he may accept the admon- the, the reminder the admonition right or fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fear allah azza wa jalla yakhsha bil ilm yani subhanallah so this is another reason why allah delays the destruction of the sinful so that they may return back to him nam going to end with the final verse on this page where allah azza wa jalla he says wa yazidu allah alladhina tadaw huda wal baqiyatu salihatu khayrun inda rabbika thawaba wa khayrun maradda and allah increases in guidance those who walk aright wa yazidu allah alladhina tadaw huda those who were guided allah increases them and the righteous deeds or righteous good deeds at last are better with your lord for reward and better resorts now this part of the verse is clear evidence to show that iman fluctuates it increases and decreases and there's no one who is on the same level of iman throughout their entire life rather it increases or it decreases Allah Azza wa Jalla also mentions in other parts of the Quran to affirm this principle of Ahlus Sunnah wa Jama'ah. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَزَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَهُمْ يَسْتَبِشِرُونَ Also Allah says, وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِيمَانًا وَتَسْلِيمًا Also we find that from the statements of the Sahaba, رضي الله عنهم, the statement of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, رضي الله عنه, when he said, sit with us so that we can believe for an hour yani increase our iman so this was the belief of the sahaba radiyallahu anhum that iman increases and decreases and there's a beautiful statement by abu darda uh, radiyallahu anhu collected by imam bukhari which he said min fiqh al abdi that is from the fiqh the understanding of the servant ayata'ahada imanahu for him to constantly check up on his iman and what has decreased from it. And it's from the fiqh, the understanding of the servants, to know, did his iman increase? Is it increasing or is it decreasing? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Look at how the sahaba look at their iman. It was like a, a iman check. They would constantly follow up on their iman. Do they find themselves increasing in their iman or decreasing? Subhanallah. Radi Allahu anhum. Look at their connection to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this is how we all should aspire to be like. Yani like the Sahaba, Allah placed them as examples for us to follow. Naam. So let us constantly check our iman on a daily basis. Multiple times throughout the day Think Is my iman increasing Do I find that I have more desire to worship Allah To read the Quran To do righteous deeds To pray the salah Or do I find myself further away from those things Without a desire Do I have uh, a desire To commit sins Or waste my time Or just Engage in activities that do not bring me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Which of the two do I prefer? And we should constantly check ourselves And also those around us Especially our family members Especially our family members And make dua Make dua constantly Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu It's reported that he would say in his dua Allahumma zidni imanan wa yaqeenan wa fiqha Allahumma zidni, Allahumma zidna imanan wa yaqeenan wa fiqha, wa fiqhan yani. Oh Allah, increase us in iman. He would ask Allah to increase him in iman. Wa yaqeenan and also in yaqeen. Yaqeen is on different levels, darajat wa fiqh. 
and understanding increase me in these three things. This is an important dua that we should recite as well. Now, and وَيَزِيدُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْ هُدَى Iman fluctuates, it increases and decreases. طيب, what are some of the greatest ways of increasing your Iman? Does anyone know? What are some things that we could do to increase our Iman? Now, this is the dua of Ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah Ibn Mas'ud. Sister said, seeking knowledge. طيب, read Qur'an. Allah mentions it right here to us. Allah mentions after he increases those who have been guided their iman, he goes on to mention something that will allow us to, if we stick to it and we adhere to it, it will be one of the greatest assistants, one of the greatest things that will assist us in increasing our iman, and that is al salihat. It is the righteous good deeds that last. And they are khayrun inda rabbika thawaban. And they are better with your Lord for reward. Wa khayrun maradda. And better for resort. Tayyip. And although this is mentioned by Allah, it doesn't mean that it's the only action that increases, increases our iman. In fact, there are many others. And Shaykh Abdul Razak al Badr, Hafidahullah Ta'ala, among the scholars of Medina, may Allah preserve him and his father, the great Muhaddith Abdul Muhsin al Abbad, Hafidahum Allah, Wara'ahum. Shaykh Abdul Razak, he has a beautiful book I advise every single person to, to read. It's in Arabic, but I'm sure by now it's been translated. And it's a book called Ziyadatul Iman wa Nuqsanu. Ziyadatul Iman wa Nuqsanu. Uh, I have the book right here. It's part of his majmur. You'll find, if you have his majmur, it's in the first volume. The book is called, the Risala is called, Asbab Ziyadat al Iman wa Nuqsanihi. Asbabu Ziyadat al Iman wa Nuqsanihi. The reasons or causes for the increase of Iman and its decrease. And he goes on to mention in detail what evidences uh, those things that increases a person's Iman and those things which prevent a person's Iman from. Increasing, rather decreasing. Um, he also has another risala called Tajdeedul Iman. Tajdeedul Iman, he also speaks about this topic. And, uh, and, and he mentions the points that increases the Iman. I have the book here in front of me. I'm going to briefly, briefly mention some of the things that he wrote. And he said among the things that increases a person's Iman is Ta'allumul ilm al-shari'i, is learning Islamic knowledge. That when you learn knowledge, it increases your iman and he quotes a bunch of evidences among them is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jalla inna hadha al-Qur'an yahdi lallati hiya aqwan that certainly this Qur'an leads to that which is most upright of course Qur'an is knowledge صح? when you learn the Qur'an it only guides you to that which is most upright subhanAllah it increases your iman and draws you closer to Allah and if a person really wants istiqama istiqama uprightness in the deen then they have to have a healthy relationship with the Qur'an, a strong relationship with the Qur'an, where it's something that they're reading on a daily basis, listening to on a daily basis. And the more connected you are to the Qur'an, the stronger your relationship with Allah will be. Because the Qur'an is kalamullah. The Qur'an is the speech of Allah. Naam. Also among the things that he mentions is knowing ma'rifatu asma'illahi al-husna to know the names of the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his lofty attributes. And Allah has the most beautiful names, so call him by it. Invoke him with those names. That certainly Allah has. 99 names whoever ahsaha whoever preserves it by learning its meanings understanding its meanings recalling its meanings implementing its meanings and memorizes them and acts upon them they will enter paradise they will what enter paradise 
Also among the things that will increase a person's iman is a ta'amul fi sirati nabiyyi al-kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to read and reflect over the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation, the best of creation, the one who was placed as a uswatun hasana, as a example, as, as the best role model, as the best role model for mankind. If we read his sirah, his life story, and ponder over the events that occurred within, without a doubt that will increase our iman and we study his sacrifice, the, the sacrifice that he made just to make sure that he conveyed the message to us to make sure that we understand how to worship Allah correctly and be saved from the fire and enter paradise, that will increase our iman. And for that reason, you have some of the Sahaba and their and their children. They would say, "Kunna nu'allamu maghazi al-Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam kama nu'allamu as-surata min al-Quran." That we were taught the expeditions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the battles of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Just as we will learn the chapters of the Quran, showing that the Sahaba and the Tabi'een they gave great importance to the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Also, what the Sheikh mentions is to learn about the beautiful aspects of our Deen of Islam, to read about the Sirah or the Sir of the Salaf al Salih, the life, the stories of the righteous predecessors, not just of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Anbiya wa Rasul. But also the companions and the tabi'een, atba'a tabi'een, and those who came after them to learn about their struggle and how much they sacrificed to worship Allah and seek knowledge and defend Islam. That that will encourage us and increase our iman and encourage us to worship Him. Naam? Also, he mentions at ta'amul fi ayatillahi al kawniya. You think about Allah's dunya, what Allah Azzajal has created. You ponder and reflect over His creation. That will help you and increase your closeness to Allah. Also, he mentioned Allah that you obey Allah, you follow His commandments. Um, um, and then he goes on to mention some of the things that causes their iman to plummet, and he said that they're broken down into two categories. You have those causes or reasonings that that are inward, connected to uh, a person's heart. Okay, and then you have those reasons or causes that are outward. Uh, among those things that are inward is al jahl, ignorance, is al ghafla, heedlessness. You know you have knowledge, but you're heedless. Naam, you don't follow what you know. You're heedless of what you know. Uh, al i'rad, yani turning away, al nisyan, forgetfulness, fi'l ma'asi wal tikab al dhunub, performing acts of disobedience and falling into sins. Racking up sins, we are the Billah. A nafs, okay, even the soul. We know that the soul is a commander of evil. It, it, it entices towards evil, we are the Billah. The Ammaratun Bisu, we are the Billah. As for those factors that are outward, outward factors, then you have a shaitan, of course, where he whispers to you, he whispers to your nafs. To your qalb, uh, the dunya and the fitan that are included within the dunya, a dunya mal'una, the dunya is cursed, right? We are the billah. And the fitan, the trial and tribulations that are contained within. And also, he mentioned Quran, Usu, evil companions. All of these things will decrease your iman, draw you further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At any rate, we should constantly beg Allah to increase our iman. And take the means that will draw draw us closer to Allah Azza wa and and raise our iman, and stay away from those factors that will cause our iman to plummet, and kill our desire in worshiping Him, Subhanahu wa Taala. And with that, we ask Allah, Allahumma zidna imanan wa yaqinan wa fiqhan. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Allahumma aslih lana dina aladhi huwa isma tu amrina. وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي فيها معادنا وجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير وجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم آتي نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها هذا وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد
wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik 